lecture 14 of ECE 2305. So in today's lecture, what we're going to be doing is we're going to sort of look a little bit about, like, what is this link layer addressing? So we know about IP addresses, but what about the MAC addresses? We saw this a little bit before in several previous lectures, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the structure and why do we have um, MAC addresses that are basically used in the link layer. We'll then talk about address resolution protocols. Okay. So, like all of us, like, you know, I think I mentioned this about three lectures ago. I brought up my cell phone. And then I looked under, um, you know, everyone's operating system is different. If you have an iPhone, if you have a Windows phone, if you have an Android phone. But in all cases, if you have something that networks with the rest of the world, the Internet, such as, like, if it's wireless or wired, uh, you should have um, a MAC address that uh, identifies your networking hardware on your phone, on your laptop, on your server, whatever connects to the network. So what happens is you might wonder, where did they get that address from, right? How do you ensure uniqueness of, let's say, if your phone has a specific MAC address, how is it unique relative to all the other devices out there on the planet? Because there's a lot of things connected to the internet, right? And the way it works is that the IEEE, right, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, um, what they do is they are responsible for administering MAC addresses or range of MAC addresses to various companies and organizations. So suppose you are Linksys, right? And you make a whole bunch of routers or you make a whole bunch of uh, Ethernet cards or, or whatever. Um, what will happen is IEEE says, this is the range that I will give you. And then the responsibility is up to you to say, okay, this NIC, this in in Ethernet card is going to have uh, this MAC address and let's say increment by one, and increment by one, and increment by one, progressively as you produce more Ethernet cards for purchase, right? So this way, what happens is, it's like your fingerprint, or your DNA, your identifier for that hardware, right? The IP address is for, essentially, like the network layer, it's for your computer, your operating system, that can change. That can be defined by some sort of system administrator. So on a network, with all those computers interfacing with each other, you, the network administrator will say, you have this IP address, and you have this one and this one, and they're unique too. In the network, or if it's connected to the internet, all of those guys will be uh, um, um, unique as well. But what the MAC address does is it says this hardware. So in addition to the, the IP address that says this computer with this operating system connected to this network, has this address, this uh, internet protocol address. I have another address below it that identifies the hardware itself, right? And what happens is this hardware address, this MAC address, is used in a network whenever you're connecting to other devices, including routers and servers and such, saying, oh, I'm getting, it from, I'm getting something from this computer with this IP address. Oh, and the connection, the hardware connection. So let's say I'm doing wired versus wireless. I'm, and that, that computer, that uh, device, is connecting to my network by wired connection. I'm going to see its MAC address, right, uh, for, for the wired connection, for the wired Ethernet co uh, connection, not the wireless Ethernet card, right? So basically, whatever hardware you connect to the network, it's going to see the IP address, right, of the uh, of the um, of the of the system that's producing this information, to, uh, the internet protocol information. But then also, what hardware is connecting physically to that network? So what happens is it's unique. Well, theoretically, it's unique. So I I wasn't aware of this. Like so Lou actually brought this up. There are ways of spoofing the MAC address. So suppose you want to break into the Wiglinski household, right? The, our uh, very secure private network or something like that. And right now what happens is, I think I mentioned this also several, several lectures ago, about how I only permit specific MAC addresses affiliated with specific hardware. Wife's iPhone, wife's laptop, Alex's uh, um, uh, you know, smartphone, Alex's laptop, Alex's desktop computer, perhaps the... Um, Digital scanner, oh, that thing's amazing. You put 50 sheets in it, 
and scans it all. Absolutely love it. But only those, mainly because I'm paranoid that my neighbors, like 500 feet away, are going to like connect to the network and steal stuff from me and this stuff. But what happens is, suppose you guys are monitoring and you detect, oh, I'm, I'm detecting some laptop and it has like this MAC address. You can spoof your device and also look like that. And all now you need to do is figure out, OK, uh, what's a legit IP address? I also reserve those as well. And then you can try and connect to my network. So it's not that difficult. That MAC address can be changed. <sighs> I know. I'm teaching bad stuff in class. So like the question is, where is this, um, this lovely MAC address? Well, in Windows, because that's what I'm running in, uh, what you would do is, OK, um, OK, I'm going to try and do this in real time. Actually, mm, OK, come on, come on. Maybe CCC won't let me play with this. <sighs> come on, let me. If, if they block it, well, there are a lot of other examples. So, ah, OK, fine. Wow, they really, OK. And I thought I was paranoid. Anyways, <laughs> what? See, ah, uh, thank you. And do IP config from there. Smart, thank you, thank you. So then do IP config, what is it, slash all? Yeah, there we go, thank you. You saved the day! So what happens is, what you've got here is essentially all the um, network information that you have for this computer that's underneath the podium. So here what you've got is, looks like you've got local area network two, you have another one, you have an IP configuration, so it's peer-to-peer -peer and all that. So this is what I mean. This guy here, here's your physical address. That's your MAC address. So it's in hex. So we allow 0 through 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And so the combination of those characters will give us a unique address for the Ethernet card that's installed in the PC. And then what happens is we have this other guy, and it seems like so it's virtual box, so it seems like, let me think, virtual box is, I, I guess it's like some sort of emulation, uh, OS, whatever. So it too has um, its own MAC address. And then notice that you also have, along with it, an IPv4, so that's the old Ethernet address, because one thing that's kind of interesting, we have IPv6, and what that guy is for is because we have all these devices connecting to the internet, we're beginning to run out of IP addresses, right? So what ends up happening, we have a new form of IPV, um, uh, IP addresses. But for now, we have IPv4. So that's what we all, or at least what I grew up with. And that identifies this computer to the network as saying, OK, I'm this guy. So across, let's say, the internet, oh, I intend this data to traverse the internet to get to, let's say, in this case, 130.0. 215.21.21, right? And I brought this up several times. Um, if you have something like 192.168.11 or anything like that, the first two sets of digits, it signifies you have an internal network. You probably have a computer that also acts as some sort of gateway to the outside world. And if you want to access Google and stuff, you can. Uh, you can share files within your internal network, but you don't have a dedicated uh, IP address. Like, so for instance, my home, I have five, six, seven devices, and they're 192.168.11. Okay, so that's actually the router. And then I have dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five, all the way to about dot eight. So the printer has one, um, wife's computer, wife's uh, laptop, uh, um, phones and such. But it's all internal. There's like if anyone here has a home network of more than two devices or more, you probably are all doing this, right? So, and then you can identify as well, like in some cases, you can also define the host. So sometimes, like suppose you're, if you don't have, let's say, the IP address, sometimes, if in this case, the host name is AK219-AV, so that's the host name of this computer. If you want to sort of search for it online, if you want to do trace route or ping, or identify, um, let's say, out on the web and say, OK, I want to find AK219-AV, and then it would be .wpi.edu, right? And I'll talk a little bit more about host names. So you don't need to know about the exact IP address. Sometimes you can, that's mapped to an actual name that should be recognizable, right? All right. 
So I digress. So you've got that, and if you have Linux, it's ifconfig, right? So as a sample, again, this is an internal address, right? That would be like what your router would be. And inside your home address, I mean, sorry, inside your home network, suppose you have um, blah, blah, blah. You have, let's say, my laptop at home, and it would communicate, send information to this address, and that would be my router. And my router, in turn, would then have an actual address, another IP address connecting to, well, uh, no, would it have another IP address? Or would it be connected to the cable modem? And that cable modem would actually get a physical address off of, let's say, in this case, Charter, right? So the router would, would collect all this information, and then that would act as the gateway between my home network and the outside world. So whatever you are, so Charter, Fios, um, or, or, or Comcast, um, you would have a cable modem, and that would be your actual interface with the World Wide Web and with the internet. OK. So one thing I, I did not discuss, which is kind of interesting, is this idea of, of called address resolution protocol. So what ARP is about is that these devices on the network usually pair up. If you notice, like for instance, IP config, you have both a MAC address and you have an IP address. Usually, like in addition to itself, it also has a table of all other IP and MAC addresses of every other device connected to that network, right? So what ends up happening is you have this mapping. It also has something called TTL, and it's not, it's not, transistor to, it's not, it's not a transistor te technology. What it stands for is time to live. So what happens is, for instance, in a lot of cases, like, for in, like uh, in Charter, so a little bit separate from this, what happens is the IP address that's assigned to you by your uh, internet service provider, so for instance, in my case, it's Charter, what happens is it says, here's your address. And after some time, it renews and renews, like maybe it's a few hours, maybe it's several days. Um, if there's not too much change in the network, you just get the same address over and over and over again, right? What happens is, in one of these networks, what happens is there is also that sense of dy dyna uh, dynamics where um, the MAC and IP address might be current at one moment and may not be current at another moment. So the TTL means this has a shelf life of X number of minutes or X number of hours. And then what happens is you have to remap it. You have to find it out. So what ARP does is this process of, suppose I have the IP address, what's the MAC address? Or the other way around, what's the MAC, like I have the MAC address, what's the IP address of this device? Okay. So the next two slides talk about doing ARP in both if you're in the same LAN and when you're in two separate LANs. So the process is, first of all, suppose you have node A and he wants to send data to B. He has the IP address of B. So let's say there's software and says, yeah, 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 send to 192.168.14. Cool, right? What's the MAC address of B? Don't know. So what happens is this process, okay, what it does is A broadcasts to the entire network. It says, hey, yo, I'm, I'm looking for B. This is his IP address, but I don't know his MAC address. B will receive these ARP packets, and, and then what we'll say from A, and then respond back to A and says, hey, A, this is actually my MAC address. Here you go. So it would be direct. It wouldn't be over the air to everyone. It would just be, A, thank you. I've received your ARP request. Here you go. Here's my MAC address. A will say, thank you very much. Here's the data. Right? And this is great. In the LAN, it's very easy. And I'll get back to how this looks in a second. If it's two separate LANs, let's say A and B are in two different networks, then you have to go through a router. So it's not as trivial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. Uh, you know I want to draw. I'm going to draw by command line what, what I mean. Okay. So, so what happens is the following. So let's say I have A. And suppose I have B. 
And let's say they're connected to the network, okay? Network. This is my LAN. So what will happen is, so A will have a table, right? So it will have B, and it has the IP address, IE, but it does not have the MAC address. Let's say C, it has the IP address, it has the MAC address. Let's say D, it has the IP address, it has the MAC address. But this is the guy that he wants to find out now. So the process is going to be as follows. So, so what A is going to do is it's going to broadcast to everyone, including B, and it will say, um, is B out there? I have his IP address. Okay? And then B is going to respond. B is going to say, hi A. I know, it's almost like this, like dialogue. It's like, oh. So hi A, got your, got your ARP request, ARP request. Here is my MAC address, okay? And then what happens is A is going to say, like now that he has both MAC and IP address, so now this is updated, this is updated. So now for B, you have IP address, check, and you have MAC address, check. Here is the start of my transmission. Okay? So the process, if you're on the same LAN, so let me emphasize, this, this, this is for the same LAN. What you've got is essentially you have A broadcasting to the network saying, I have this IP address. Is B out there? What's your MAC address? B is going to respond, hey, A, I got your message. Here's my MAC address. Then A says, thank you. Now I'm complete. Let's start transmitting. All right? If, on the other hand, so now let's get complicated. If, on the other hand, you have something of this nature. So let's say you've got A. You've got B, and they're each part of a LAN, and then there's a router, ho oh, oh. a router, a gateway, something that connects that LAN to other LANs. Now the process is a little bit different. So again, A will have a table, so B, the IP address is known, the MAC is not known. C, IP is known, the MAC is known. D, the IP address is known, the MAC is not known. Okay? So wh what it will do is, it's a little bit more of a complicated situation. So this is ARP, ARP on two different lands. Okay? And so the diagram looks a little bit different. So what you're going to have is you're going to have A, you're going to have router, okay, or gateway, and, and then you have B. So the way this will work is as follows. Actually, let's put two lines just to prevent confusion. So A is going to send out that ARP request, right? So that's your ARP request or process. And it's going to say, hey, is B out here? I'm looking for you. I don't have your Mac. The router is going to say, like, given that IP address, he's not on this network. So what happens is, but the router knows how to get a hold of B. So at that point, A is taken care of because um, essentially A does not need 
these MAC address because they're not even physically on the same network anymore. They're not on the same LAN. But A knows the router's MAC address, right? So all that really matters is that A has a connection to the router and that's it. It will just keep on continuing to transmit that way. But now the router, on the other hand, will continue this process. And what the router will do is it's going to reach out and say, hey, B, if you're out there, I have your IP address. I don't have your MAC. Okay? And then B is going to respond, here it is. And then the router will say, thank you. Let's start transmitting through A. So in this case, what happens is it's almost like A and its operation has been transposed over to the router. And it will conduct this process of the AR, ARP process in order to establish that connection and have an updated table to then continue the data transfer between A and B through the two different LANs. All right? So, so as a result, what happens is this AR, so we have like, you know, two separate things. We have a network device and, and each guy will have its own unique IP address and then the MAC address is how the hardware recognizes each other. And so you have two identities that are affiliated with each other. We saw this before when we looked at the uh, protocol architectures many, many moons ago. Remember with TCP IP and the like. All right. So with that, um, that concludes uh, lecture 14. Wow, that was fast. But, okay, but, so...